Hi folks and welcome to the season premiere of Murray State Basketball with Steve Prohm on the Racer Report. And we come to you today here in the CFSB Center and we'll be bringing a coach in here in just a moment. But first, let's recap what the racers have done in the past week. All they did was go about 5,000 miles away and win the Great Alaska Shootout. They started on Wednesday, day before Thanksgiving, with a hard-fought 64-62 win over Alaska Anchorage, the host team. And then they came back the next day and uh, another hard-fought uh, two-point victory as they are three-point victory as they knocked off San Francisco by the score of 70-67. And then that took us to the championship game on Saturday night in Anchorage at Sullivan Arena. And the Racers and Southern Miss played a classic college basketball game that was eventually won by the Racers in double overtime. 90 to 81 was the final score and it was just a fantastic experience for the Racers. And uh, we're excited to have uh, the new head coach of the Racers, the 15th head coach, Steve Prohm here. And coach, welcome to the show. <laughs> Looking forward to the season. Have you recovered from, uh, from the trip yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm recovered. And uh, hopefully tomorrow by practice, our players will have been recovered. But it was a great experience and great trip. Well, uh, it, it was something uh, that the Racers just had two hard fought games to get to that championship. And then for that game to go double overtime was just amazing. Yeah, all three games. You know, the first game, I was worried about the first game, obviously the travel and the distance and then playing the home team because as last Anchorage, though they're Division Two, very good, top 20 Division Two team, have a very good post player, and they have, they can shoot the basketball extremely well. And our guys, they looked fatigued the first game. And, you know, we didn't finish. We were up 11, didn't finish Didn't finish well. Got last lackadaisical last minute and a half and scared everybody. But <laughs> this, the Southern Miss game was, you know, it was obviously a great basketball game, but it was a lot of fun to be a part of. It's a great championship game, and both teams played extremely well. It was one of those games you just feel privileged that, uh, that we're, you were there to watch it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and roll the highlights from Sullivan Arena uh, championship night and coach it. As we get into the first half here, it, it did have a championship feel to it, didn't it? Yeah, the atmosphere was great. Alaska Anchorage, the Anchorage, the city of Anchorage does a great job supporting it. Uh, very similar to kind of Murray. You know, they really embrace their school and embrace the sporting, it's any sporting event. And it was great. The atmosphere was great. They were pulling for both teams and big shot after big shot in the second half. Well, the racers uh, jumped out on top 10 to 4. Uh, Aska made a shot in the paint. And then at about the 13 10 mark, uh, we'll see uh, Dante Poole hit a three pointer, put the racers up by nine. Uh, Dante, of course, uh, you know, had a tremendous tournament too. He was named to the all tournament team. Uh, then there, uh, about 7.40 of the first half, the racers took a nine point lead. Uh, on a fast break and uh, Dante Poole hit the shot there. Towards the end of the first half, it looked like, uh, and I know you were thinking this too, you guys could have possibly built a 15, 16, 20 point lead, but the last minute there, the, the, you got the lead up to 12, but missed a couple opportunities there. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, obviously I was excited to go in the half up 12, thought maybe, you know, maybe 14, you know, 14, 15 possibly, but we played a great half to hold them to 27 points and we executed on both ends of the floor but to be up 12 I was excited about that situation we were in but you know I knew Southern Miss would make a run they're very well coached and Lachey Page, Angelo Johnson, Maurice Bolden they, they've got some very good players. Yeah it was, it was a tough ball game so the racers were up 39-27 at the half and then uh, we got into the second half and uh, the racers uh, quickly made it a 14 point lead which, that, which was their biggest uh, uh, of the game but then by the 12:30 mark, uh, Southern Miss, you, you knew they were going to come out and make a run at you, and they they did that and tied that ball game up. It was 43-43 with 12:30 to go. Yeah, you know, obviously I didn't want it to get tied up that quickly, uh, especially after going up 14. We came out of the half; it was our basketball, and wanted to execute offensively, and we did that. We we got up 14, and. We've got to do a better job, you know, limiting our scoring droughts and then continually to guard people. Um, they started getting in the paint. They caused us some problems offensively and we were able to tie it up. And, you know, we went through the first really basically scored four points the first seven, eight minutes. And, you know, that, that put them in position to tie it up. But, but you know basketball is a game of runs. So that after Southern Miss tied it, the Racers went on a bit of a run. Isaiah Cannon, who was the, the tournament MVP, he hit back-to-back uh, -back threes. And then uh, Stacy Wilson hit a three on the break. It was a 13 to three run that got it back up to nine. But here comes Southern Miss again. And again, and again we're tied with 622 to go. Yeah, we, we, we got up, we tied it up. And then our guys, that I, I talk about resiliency. They've been resilient so far early in the season. And they just came back, extended the lead again. And then Southern Miss again came back. And that's where we've got to do a better job in 
shot selection at times, decision making, and then continue to guard on the defensive end of the floor to, to be able to keep that lead in that six, eight, ten point range. But you know it, that shaped up for a great finish. Well, cer certainly it did. Uh, uh, the Racers had a three point lead uh, as after uh, Cannon, actually a five point lead after Cannon uh, got his own miss and made just a wonderful reverse uh, layup move. Um, but then uh, down the stretch there, Southern Miss had the ball about eight seconds to go. I really didn't like that situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ball was out of our hands there. So it was just about defense and then about hoping we could get a stop. And, and we did that, and we were fortunate to get a stop and go to overtime and you know, just try to get our troops rallied and ready to go for the next segment. And I just tried to preach to them that, hey, this is fun. This is a championship game. We're in overtime. You know, let's, let's just go try to win it now. So then in the first overtime, uh, Page hits a three for Southern Miss. It's the first time the entire game that the racers have trailed. Uh, and then the racers, I think, had two possessions where you couldn't score. And then uh, you got to stop, and then Cannon hit a three on the break. That was the only points in the first overtime. Yeah, I didn't realize it was when I looked at the stats at the end of the game, three to three in mm -hmm. overtime. And that was obviously that was interesting. But down three, and they had several possessions to get it up to five. And I was proud of our guys to continue to fight through fatigue and continue to guard. And then finally, Isaiah obviously hit a big three in transition. And then uh, the, you almost won it in overtime because uh, Cannon missed, the ball almost went in, Long had a tip, uh, Wilson had a good tip at it too. So we go to the second overtime and that's where the racers really kicked it into gear. Wilson hit a three, Cannon hit another, and eventually you got the lead up to, to eight with uh, 118 to go. And I don't think you could have envisioned the, the second overtime going any better than it did. No, the difference in overtime, obviously, when you you want to score first, just to really put the pressure on the other team. Uh, it's kind of like overtime mm -hmm. in football. And we came out, you know, we executed our first possession. Isaiah got a layup. Second possession down, Stacy makes a three. Uh, then Isaiah started cramping, and we, and then we came out of a timeout, subbed them back in, he made another three, we got up 80-72, and that was really the difference in the basketball game. Well, then the racers, uh, uh, Cannon hit a three, uh, hit, a, hit a free throw to finish up the scoring, and the racers uh, won that uh, championship game by the score of 90-81 to 81 over a very good Southern Miss team, and uh, what a day it was for the racers to go to the Great Alaska Shootout, a great venue, uh, a historic tournament that's been won by all the big names in college basketball. New Wave Advantage number 17, the area's fastest internet. This is Nicole. She wants to watch her favorite YouTube video. Not so fast, Nicole. Her slow DSL connection means downloading takes forever. Nicole's tired of waiting, so she's switching to New Wave. New Wave has the area's fastest internet, up to 10 times faster than DSL. Now Nicole can surf, download photos, and stream videos faster than ever before, without the wait. Thanks to New Wave. Blazing fast internet. Another New Wave Advantage. Call today. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. For more than 30 years, the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision has helped athletes achieve their dreams. The dream of playing football and hearing the home crowd cheer time after time. The dream of competing for a national championship. The dream of an excellent education. The dream of becoming a leader. And the dream of playing the right way with sportsmanship. NCAA Division I Football. It's not a dream. Come see for yourself. Hi folks and welcome back to the Racer Report here from the CFSB Center. Dave Winder and head coach Steve Prohm and we're going to roll the highlights and take a look at the second game in Anchorage last week when the Racers won the Great Alaska Shootout. And uh, this was a team from the West Coast Conference, very well coached. And uh, the Racers had a, a heck of a ball game here and uh, you know, uh, 
I felt like in the second game, Coach, the team was still trying to get their legs underneath them, but uh, this was a pretty well-played ball game start to finish by your team. It was. You know, the, what we did out there, what we've been able to do so far this season is to get out to good starts. You know, we got out 9-2 to two against the last game, Ridge. We came out against San Francisco, got up 14-4, to four, and I really I, I felt good going into the game that if we were, we were, we were healthy and the fatigue was kind of out of our trip, you know, the trip was out of our, you know, we got a, our legs under us, and we're going to be able to really pressure them and guard them, and our toughness would overcome them. And I thought, you know, we could go up 11 in the, in the first half, going to halftime up 11 was big. But again, we were up 30 to 16 with the ball, a chance to go up 16. Isaiah turns it over one time late when they changed defenses. But again, it's another second half run by San Francisco, made the game close and interesting, and they had a shot at the buzzer to tie. But proud of our guys again. The, the other thing that made that first half uh, really interesting, have you ever had a game where you had two guys score all the points in the first half? And that, that's what Isaiah Cannon and Dante Pool did there in the first half. Yeah, not that I can remember. Obviously, <laughs> I have to look back and see. Both of them were really, you know, they got them. Both of them were getting very good looks, and both of them were making shots. So, obviously, you want both those guys shooting. Um, you know, if it was 50 points and a half and it was only two guys, it'd really be unusual. But 30 points, each had about 15. Mm -hmm. I think one had 16, one had 14. But... You know, I knew in the second half for us to win, other guys are going to have to get involved, and that's what happened. I think 30 out of the 40 points in the second half were scored by other guys. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so the Racers led it 30 to 19 at the half, and now we're into the second half. Uh, Cannon hit a three to go up by 13. Uh, and then the first field goal, other than Cannon or Poole, was actually Juwan Long uh, hitting a three to put Murray State up 38 to 25 with 17 minutes to go. And as the second half went on, when you dipped under the 13 minute mark, you knew San Francisco uh, was going to make a run, and they eventually got it down to four, or actually three with three minutes to go, and then got it down to one there. So they they made a run, and you, you talk about being resilient. You know, your, your team had all kinds of chances in game one, game two, and game three to, to not come through, but they did. Yeah, we, you know, they started picking us up full court, and they were fouling a bunch, obviously, in press offense. They were able to turn us over a little bit, and the one thing, we were able to make free throws, and Juwan Long made four big free throws, and even during the midst of the second half, Brandon Garrett made big free throws, A. Jackson made big free throws, we were able to make free throws, and uh, Ivan made the free throws late, I believe it was Ivan, Ivan or Juwan really late in the game, and then San Francisco had a shot at the buzzer, and of, you know, obviously Juwan Long ends up being the one that blocks the shot. So. Yeah, it was a heck of a win for, for the Racers, actually uh, it was Long hit the four free throws, uh, with under uh, 11 seconds to go to give the Racers a 70-67 win. And uh, taking a look at the final stat total, the Racers uh, were 19 out of 23 from the free throw line. Uh, I didn't think the team would stay above 80% all season. I don't think you did either, but here we are. Uh, the Racers are 7-0, and and after these seven games, you're shooting 795 from the free throw line. That's excellent. Yeah, when you're shooting 80% from the free throw line, is great. But when you're shooting 80% from the free throw line, you're making 18 to 20 a game. That, that's great numbers, and we've got to continue to get attack the basket, get post touches and paint touches, and continue to put pressure on the, on the defense. Okay, so that's uh, game two down from the Great Alaska Shootout. We've shown you the championship game. Uh, that was the second game, and now we're going to go back uh, after the break and take a look at the first round game. We'll do that next here from the CFSB Center on the Racer Report with Head Coach Steve Pro. There is a new, unstoppable force in the universe of internet speed. Introducing Warp Wave, the next generation of high-speed internet, brought to you by the masters of internet service. New wave communications with speeds up to 50 megs. Warp Wave takes you faster than you ever thought possible. Be the most feared online gamer in the galaxy. Stream video with no deep space delay. Download at speeds light years ahead of the competition. Call today and surf at warp speed with the fastest internet, period. Explore a new world. You guys have done a lot of things. Come and make your own place. Let's go to the place of Ukusanga. The world of new experiences. Thank you very much. 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 Th
dunia anda untuk dijelajahi. Tanzuan de Shijie. Murray State University, your world to explore. Picks it up. He's going to have to shoot from his knees. And he oh! banked it in! He banked it in! On the far sideline. Shoots at the buzzer. Go! This year, when you get asked where were you, make certain the answer is, I was there. Murray State University season tickets on sale now. Hi folks, and welcome back to the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm. We're excited about the start of the season. The Racers 7-0 uh, and as we uh, record our program today. And we've got one more game to look at from the Great Alaska Shootout, a championship uh, for the Racers, uh, their first team championship since uh, Devester Anderson's team won uh, the Oklahoma tournament and beat the Sooners back in 1998. So it was just a, a fabulous time for the Racers uh, to win the championship. And uh, we're going to roll the uh, roll the tape here. And uh, you know, a lot of folks looked at the at the tournament uh, pairings and and just thought, well, it's Alaska Anchorage, their Division II team. This is no ordinary Division II team. Uh, and really, when you think about it, the top level Division II teams they can beat just about anybody. And you guys had your hands full, didn't you? Yeah, you know, uh, I was very worried about that game. Yeah. Uh, you know, I worry about everything, but that game had me worried. The distance, the travel, playing on their home floor, um, their ability, you know, that they were there, going to be there and rested. And it was their first game of the season. They had three exhibition games. So those guys, this is their first you know, chance to play Division One game. So they were going to be excited. And, you know, the trip the trip kind of hurt us that first game. Mm -hmm. You know, at the 18 minute mark when Juwan Long was kind of hovered over at the free throw line, I said, oh man, these guys, <laughs> these guys are tired. Uh, but we were able to get up 9-2. to We got up early. and. They did a great job closing it out. We got up 17-9. They, they took the lead actually going in a half, but challenged our guys and they responded first five minutes of the second half. And we only won by two. They hit a last second three. We were up 11 with about a minute and a half to go. And the final score is a little, a little bit closer than the, than the game was mm -hmm. played, but they're very good. And any, any top Division II team, like you said, they're very good teams. Uh, sometimes there's Division One transfer, sometimes it's academics. A lot of those kids are kids we, we would recruit. Yeah, it was a tough, tough ball game for the Racers. Uh, we were down 24-23 uh, uh, at the half. And uh, one play that you'll see in here is, is a steal and a dunk for Ivan Aska as he became the 37th member of the Murray State 1000 Point Club. And coach, when you think about all the guys that that have uh, suited up for the racers over the year. It's, it's an honor to uh, to put yourself on that list with a thousand points. It is. It is. It's an extreme. I mean, it's a it's a huge honor. You know, scoring a thousand points in your in your career is is a great honor. And I didn't realize it until uh, until I guess later that night mm -hmm. that I saw that I saw people tw tweeting about it. Uh -huh. So I said, man, I got to congratulate Ivan. So the next morning in our team meeting, when we were watching our film session, I congratulated him and. He's had a tremendous career here. He's done a lot of great things and hopefully he can finish up his senior year the right way. Well, the Racers uh, finished up this game in, in the right way uh, as Aska is the guy who made the two free throws with 5.1 to go to put it up to a five-point lead. Uh, and then uh, Anchorage hit a buzzer three, but it didn't matter, and the Racers won it by the score of uh, 64 uh, to 62. And, Coach, uh, got a couple minutes here before we have to take a break. Uh, maybe just uh, for our fans, maybe just tell them uh, what a great experience this was for the team. Uh, of course, winning three games and winning a championship, that makes it a great experience. But there was a lot more to this trip than, than just the basketball. Yeah, the, the ins and outs of the game, of the teams, of the travel, that's what's fun. And college basketball, I mean, our kids have been blessed and fortunate. We were in Toronto in July, and you can see the, the dividends of that, the, that paying off now. And then now they're in Anchorage, Alaska, and a couple of weeks ago they were in Baltimore by the harbor. And, so many great experiences, opportunities, and you don't realize just our guys getting out out of the bus and seeing a moose. <laughs> you know what <laughs> yeah. that, how exciting that those guys really, you know, so thought of that and seeing a different, you know, way of living and different lifestyle out there and the snow and the mountains. Beautiful, beautiful area out there in Anchorage. I'd never been to Anchorage. I'd been mm -hmm. to Fairbanks, but college basketball gives these guys so many great opportunities and. To be honest, it's the travel home from the game at where you and Neil afterwards laughing because <laughs> Neil can't get the car started. And, um, it's things like that. It's it's the stories behind the games is why it's fun to coach and fun to be around good people and good good staff. I've got a great staff, great support staff. 
I got great kids, and that, that's what makes it a lot of fun. And probably the most rewarding thing of the whole trip was just not winning the championship, but the way other coaches, the way that community, and the way the Alaska Anchorage people, and even the referees, the way they talked about our kids and our program, and that means a lot to me. That cer certainly means a lot uh, to everyone at Murray State. And, and I know some of our friends that we made will be uh, watching uh, this show uh, from Anchorage next week, and I just want to tell them congratulations on uh, 34 years of running the Great Alaska Shootout, and thank you so much. We had a family that hosted us. Uh, they call them Sea Wolf Captains and uh, they just took care of us and it was a great, great experience. Well, we're going to take another break here with head coach Steve Froman of the Race Report. When we come back, we're going to look ahead to what's coming up this week for the racers as they play at Western Kentucky. We'll do that next. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, Service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. There is a new, unstoppable force in the universe of internet speed. Introducing Warp Wave, the next generation of high-speed internet. Brought to you by the masters of internet service. New wave communications with speeds up to 50 megs. Warp Wave takes you faster than you ever thought possible. Be the most feared online gamer in the galaxy. Stream video with no deep space delay. Download at speeds light years ahead of the competition. Call today and surf at warp speed with the fastest internet, period. Hi folks, welcome back to the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm. It was a championship week for the racers at the Great Alaska Shootout. And let's hear from the three players of the game as the racers won three big games. Yeah, I'm just getting used to the transition I had to make from junior college to um, Division One basketball. And it's coming along, you know, you gotta keep getting better day by day. Plus, you know, it's always, it always comes down to, you know, to the wire games and, and free throws and, and being tough with the ball. So uh, that's all the things that we know, we know about and we know how to control. So um, when it gets down to those situations, we're real comfortable and we're real comfortable with going to the line and, and making those shots. It's been a while. Uh, I can't, especially not on this level, I ain't never been in a situation like that. And, uh, I'm just glad our team was able to hang in there and kept fighting. They weren't going to quit and I wasn't going to quit, so I'm just excited for our group of guys to come in here and get this win. The guys were really kind of getting tired there towards the end, I know you were. <laughs> yeah, uh, the fatigue tried to catch up with me. I tried to fight it off and I'm glad they hung in there with me and let me finish the game. Uh, my teammates were there to push me, so like I say, I got to give credit to them guys and our coaches. They did a great job preparing us for this tournament, so I'm um, just glad to get this win. Well, a good chance there for you to meet uh, with three of the players of the game that we had on Racer Radio, uh, Stacy Wilson, Dante Poole, and then, of course, Isaiah Cannon, who was named the tournament MVP, and, and Dante was named the all-tournament team. Um, you could just tell how how much they were wanting to win those games, and it was a team effort all the way. You, you need certain guys doing certain things, and you're getting that right now. Yeah, you know, Stacy Wilson, I'm, you know, mentioning him, talk about him first. If he doesn't play well against Alaska Anchorage, we may not win the basketball game. He has 12 big points off the bench, and he's really developed. You know, that's why that Toronto trip, like I talked about earlier, was so mm -hmm. important. He could get, we could learn what he needs to do to buy into our system more and get better within our system, and he's done that. Dante Poole's, you know, great senior leadership. He's been good defensively, and he's been making shots. And then Isaiah is just, obviously, we know he's a very good player, a very talented player. He's got to continue to get better defensively on the defensive end of the floor, and we'll continue to challenge him with that. Challenge him with that. But right now, offensively, his stats are very good. He's sharing the ball. He's making shots, and obviously, he's a huge part of our team. 
Okay, so now uh, we'll move on to what's going on this week. Thursday night, the Racers play Western Kentucky for the 149th time in that historic rivalry. The Racers will be going over to Diddle Arena to play uh, the Hilltoppers. And then Sunday, the first home game here in a long, long time, when a, a great Dayton Flyers team comes in here. But, Coach, let's talk about Western Kentucky. Uh, you know, Coach McDonald does a good job over there. These games are always big. And you know it's going to be a big time atmosphere Thursday at, at Bowling Green. Yeah, this is obviously a, a, it's a great rivalry. It's one of the top rivalries in college basketball. Programs are just two hours apart. Um, two really good mid-major basketball programs. Coach McDonald does a great job up there. He's got a young team. He lost three very good seniors last year, but young doesn't mean not talented. They are very talented. Uh, George Fant, you know, led by really George Fant. He was a high, re highly recruited kid, another kid, Gordon. They've got several highly recruited freshmen on that team, so, and they've played a very non tough non-conference schedule. So it'll be a great, great environment up there in Diddle. Uh, we're looking forward to it. That's on Thursday night in Bowling Green. And we're going to take our final break here on the Race Report with Steve Prohm. When we come back, we'll take a look ahead, uh, even past uh, the Dayton game as the racers get into December now. We'll do that next on the Race Report. New Wave Advantage number 17, the area's fastest internet. This is Nicole. She wants to watch her favorite YouTube video. Not so fast, Nicole. Her slow DSL connection means downloading takes forever. Nicole's tired of waiting, so she's switching to New Wave. New Wave has the area's fastest internet, up to 10 times faster than DSL. Now Nicole can surf, download photos, and stream videos faster than ever before, without the wait. Thanks to New Wave. Blazing fast internet. Another New Wave Advantage. Call today. Like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. It's gone! The racers win! We are racers. Hi folks, welcome back here to the CFSB Center with head coach Steve Prohm on the Racer Report as uh, this is our first basketball show of the season after the Racers had a successful uh, football season now into basketball and uh, coach, this uh, floor that we're uh, sitting on here right now, the CFSB Center, the Racers will be back here on Sunday against Dayton. Uh, it will be good to get home <laughs> to our home court and our home fans, won't it? Yeah, it'll be great. We haven't played here since the 17th of November and obviously to come home and then host an unbelievable, very well coached and a very good Dayton Flyer team who just beat Minnesota the other night by 16 to win the Old Spice Classic. It's a great opportunity to get a great home, home win. Okay, Coach. Uh, well, we've run out of time here on this week's race report. Uh, th this is going to be our set in here. We, we, can, we can do the show wherever we want, Coach. No, this is our home. <laughs> this is where it needs to be. That'll be good. Coach, thanks. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks. Head Coach Steve Prohm, this is Dave Winder. We'll see you next time on the Racer Report. And as we leave you today, here's the voice of the racers, Neil Bradley from cold Alaska. Johnson across the stripe. Down to 10 seconds. Nine. Eight. They're going to just go ahead and go for it here. Five seconds, four, three, spin move in the lane. It's loose. Shot put up at the buzzer. No. It's no good. We're going overtime. Back to action. Racers by five, three. Right wing. It's good. They get it to Cannon. He buries a three. It's 80 to 72. Under three minutes to go. The Racers finding a little something extra for the second overtime. Shot up at the buzzer is waved off. The Racers have claimed the championship of the Great Alaska Shootout in double overtime. Murray State 90, Southern Miss 81. Trophy presentation next on the Racer Sports Network.